Oh, we're talking, Ron, when you walk in about Flavor Flav owning OJ's bronze statue. Bronze statue, and if they if if they if, if they give it to OJ, they could force him to sell it to give the money to the Goldmans. However, if someone just owns it and lets OJ borrow it, they can't force the owner to sell it. By bronze statue, do you guys mean the Heisman Trophy? <laughs> Is that, that what you're talking about? He doesn't about? have that anymore, no. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be crazy? <laughs> the bronze statue, he's like running in it. <laughs> no, it's, a li- it's the life-size from his backyard. It's the life-size OJ statue. Scroll down, Troy. Show running. Uh, okay. Flavor Flav is in possession of it. He's wearing it around his neck. <laughs> yes, yeah. I don't know why OJ has bare feet in this. Uh, I don't the, either. He's wearing his football uniform. I, well, I don't know whether you guys remember when he was at USC, never wore cleats. Is that he, right? They used I to call him the that. barefooted bastard of <laughs> Southern California, and off he'd go. Off he'd go. Run. That makes the stats even more incredible. Yeah. Um, you know who was not the one person who was not surprised that OJ killed Nicole? Huh. My dad. Um, <laughs> Is that right? No. He yeah. saw it coming. He said it about a lot of people uh, when I was <laughs> younger, but you know, OJ was definitely one of them. Was he? Now, was he one of those people that thought that when that marriage occurred, this is going to end badly? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. And he also felt bad for the kids because they didn't fit in either world. Well, um, yeah, that's tough. Yeah, that's a because tough one. Because they're not going. You know, they won't have friends because yeah. they don't know what they are. Yeah, they don't know where they belong. Yeah. It's tough. But your dad wasn't shocked. Yeah, no, not even shocked at all. Uh, but there he is. Flavor Flav still wears a clock around his neck. Yeah. He does. And, and, and the, the clock used to have a little more, I feel like, jewels encrusted in it. <laughs> yeah, it makes me worry about how Flav's doing that's for himself. True. That's because... a kitchen clock, <laughs> if anything. Yeah. That's like one of those clocks, like a, a cat face. Yeah. Clock, it's just you know? his thing now, though. He's got to do it. He just right. throws that piece of shit on. But also after Piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> after thirty five years, still the hat sideways to say, "Hey, I'm not a regular guy." You right. know what I mean? I'm not a ball player. Um, hey, first of all, too, congratulations, guys. I don't know how you did it. You got me back in the building. <laughs> and uh, Twitter's blowing up right now. People are going crazy. <laughs> when you heard Anthony in on Friday, were you like, fuck, this is, I'm the guy who comes in after Anthony? <laughs> uh, no, you know, you know what I actually thought was, I saw you guys the night before. Mm-hmm. I was with Anthony the night before. Nobody said anything to Ronnie B. Well, you you guys didn't know. really ticked a lock. We found out at the, uh, at the a, show as we were yeah. seeing you. That's amazing. Yeah, we found amazing. out at the show that that it was okay. We got the approval from both of them. Yeah, uh, at the show. So that was I just texted Ant immediately and did it. I probably should have waited till today because <laughs> security hadn't been cleared. Yeah, well, we, you're, we got excited. <laughs> yeah, your crack staff just went. I guess it's okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just comes in. See, I would have fired somebody. So I run a very tight staff. Yeah, we 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 need to have some more of that discipline around. Well, the here. staff. I have to say, it wasn't the staff's fault because security hadn't been contacted, and they they couldn't be contacted until Scott did it in the morning, which. He he did. Yeah. We got a hold of him. Roland actually uh, did a good day and got his assistant involved. And mm-hmm. th- less than an hour. It took less than an hour. So it was okay. Well, um, Scott called me last night. Oh, asked no. me to get in here. He says the morning show sucks balls. <laughs> <laughs> I go, I, and he woke me up and I'm like, I, I said, what? And he goes, they suck balls. You know how he, he's always looking for a catchphrase. Yeah, he is. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. right. And then he's got two. a website where he sells all the shirts. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know whether he's allowed to do that. So I said, what the hell, I'll get up. I guess everybody, I think Sway is going to be in here tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, everybody's going to nick to Apollo the next day. We're all going to take a shot, help out any way we can until we get this thing up and running. We appreciate, we appreciate that very yeah. much. Yeah. It's like an Amish barn. Uh, <laughs> Everyone whole, just chips in. Yeah. Everybody yeah. just comes in together. Well, that's what they say about our show. It takes a village sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> takes a village idiot is yeah. what it really does. But yes, Sam, you're right. I will be in Montreal. It's going to be a fun show. Oh. Just for laughs, Friday, July 28th, I'm doing the big comedy 101. Listen to what I got on my uh, show. Uh, Jimmy Schubert, Dan Soder, and Mr. Jim Norton. Whoa. All there together. That's what, that's a Friday night? Friday night. I'm going over there right after my... I'm doing a show, and then I'm going right to see you guys immediately it's after. It's going to be really, really fun. Yeah, I'm happy to be doing that. That's going to be a very fun one. I uh, I heard Justin Trudeau 
is going to be there. He's real, at uh, that show. Yeah, he's coming out. To, uh, he's going to be, I think, at three shows, and Comedy One on One is one oh, of good. them. Oh, good. Yeah. Is he doing time, or he just wants to watch? No, no. He just wants to watch. He just wants to see what's happening, and it's a way of, I call it a hand across the border. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's our hand from the United States. We had nothing to do with the Russians. There's nothing happening there. It's fake news. All the way, it's <laughs> putting on a glove because it's colder, and then shaking hands with... So you're actually kind of comfortably shifting into the role of diplomat. You know what? I think you're right about that. Right? I think I would call myself... Diplomacy, I think, belongs to every citizen. Agreed. Every citizen. Yeah. Uh, Even OJ. There he is, right there, barefooted OJ. <laughs> and I'll tell you something, and I don't... You always have to be careful today. Those feet look like hands. Those feet <laughs> look like they could hold on to a branch <laughs> if <laughs> need be. <laughs> that may just be in the sculpting, of course. But is the, doesn't it strike you? And why are they whiter? They, they, gave them, they are weird. whiter, yeah. and they give them yeah. bunions. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't give a guy bunions in a statue. <laughs> I, w I wonder if he put like one of his favorite pairs of shoes on the statue. Like he liked to have real. You know how some people like to have like a statue and then they put a real yeah. item on it. Yeah. If that's why, I leave the feet bare. Yeah. Because I want to put my real shoes on. That it. is a weird one. Like why? Why would they have bare? And, and maybe it is, is. Is are his feet a lighter color than they? But were? it almost. I know. It's but crazy. It's yeah. weird. It's weird. Um, but they had also said that he. Uh, denied ever owning those shoes, and he had thrown them into a <laughs> fucking gully somewhere. <laughs> <That's so cool. laughs> Do you think he's going to be a celebrity again? Like oh, a big God, he was gigantic. I was living down in Florida when he was there, and anywhere he went, people had their picture p taken. You mean after the murders? Oh, yeah. yeah, not before the murders. Well, actually, I, he used to hang out there a lot before the murders too. But after the murders, he was, he was down in Florida. And wherever he went, people said, Could I, this is even like pre-selfie. Can I get my picture taken with you? Mother, and he would probably always say yes, right? They said, everybody said he was the nicest guy. Now, I did, he used to be at a lot of um, events, uh, like on the beach, before the murders. And uh, one of them, there was a, uh, some, some, Hawaiian Tropic was the name of it. So they used to have the Hawaiian Tropic models. Unfucking believably beautiful young chicks, right? And OJ one night had gotten too drunk. They had to say, Jewish, you got to leave the party, blah, blah, blah. The girls are going to bed because they used to like try to, you know, move them around together. And OJ had come back later, jumped the fucking fence what? and was glaring in the window. Was he? And this was pre step. <laughs> I mean, he had it in his fucking yeah. mind. He was there. He, yeah. He wasn't going to bed without something tight around his cock. Is the way he put it. <laughs> and, uh, but people were like, man, OJ, when he drinks, he gets a little fucking crazy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I can't imagine the, the psychosis that must have been building because he put on that nice guy act in public for so long. And right. so, I mean, he was everywhere. And he was just Mr. He was the Michael Strahan of his time. But you have just... to wonder if it's CTE, though. I won't wonder, is it CTE? Like, did it, did he get fucked up after... Like, maybe that wasn't an act. Like, maybe he just snaps sometimes because his brain is fucked up from concussions. Did anyone ever bring that up before? This is the first time I've ever heard anybody say that. Because when that happened, we weren't talking about concussions. Right, it was, CTE yeah. wasn't a big Definitely yeah. not when it was happening. Like, it's come... I, I, I think the conversation has started to... Been said a little bit. Has anybody tried to give him an MRI since then? It would be fucking interesting to see. see. I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. No, I, it definitely hasn't been done. I'm kind of blown jail, away but... because I had never once considered that. Yeah, that's it, like when CTE started. You talked about. It, I was like, I wonder if he, uh, you know, who knows? It's possible. Why else would such a seemingly nice guy snap? Um, and he, his reputation for being a nice guy was was pretty long. Right. And again, they yeah. can be pieces of shit too, but too many people had thought he was awesome for him to just be a complete piece of shit. He was a salesman though. I mean, That's he was true. a constant salesman and they knew that he was showing up. The, the cops had to come to the house because they were fucking screaming at each other sure. and all that shit. Well, she was, you know, she was uh, egging him on. She was egging him on a little yeah. bit. A little bit. Who was, the, uh, who was the other football player that she was with that was like his Marcus buddy? Allen. Yeah. 
So that that's really that yeah. fucks guys up. Yeah, a younger, that, better looking, more relevant guy who's yeah. good, like Boop. you, <laughs> and right. also had shoes. Yeah. I mean, that, <laughs> that in the back of your mind, like that fucking shoe wearing prick. Right. Yeah. He's got no. He's got all these yeah. yards, but shoes with shoes on. Did did uh, anyone like when you were younger ever like that you broke up with go out with a friend? Yes. Of yours after that. My first the first girl I ever fucked went out with my Jamaican friend. Mm. Right after it was uh, awful. That's the worst. Yeah, it was Big, hard. Thick, thick Jamaican. <laughs> well, you know, I, I imagine that that did, that he was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't ask her, but I imagine he was better in bed than I was. Yeah, but sure. Uh, you were as a youngster cucked, as they say. I was cucked. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know yeah. it at the time. By BBC. I, I it was, was devastating. Like, and, and this is probably this is. I think it's a Marcus Allen situation. Uh, my my when I was in college like it was like probably freshman or sophomore year it was my high school girlfriend that i kept in college but then it became long distance uh -huh. she was like i i gotta we have to take a break because i think i want to start dating girls and i was like yeah sure like figure that out yeah within a week she called me at like happy as a clam because we were on a break so just as friends she could tell me that she hooked up with another guy named sam wow it That's was really bad. It was the worst. Another guy in it, but she was probably much happier with. Did you date her again after that? Yeah. Did you really? Yeah. I mean, you talk about being cucked. Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, did you hook up with anyone? No. Ew. <laughs> no, I didn't. No. No, I was. She fucked Sam. I was. Well, I, you know what? It's tough to have game with ladies when, when so you're heartbroken. So you dated right after the other Sam, and you're talking. Minutes after, yeah, <laughs> let, yes. let me eat that cream pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sam the man came. Sam the cup cleaned up. <laughs> That's fucking really hot, Sam. Well, I figured if his name was Sam, it's probably pretty much the same anyway, right? Yeah. Well, she he didn't know it. Sam didn't know how to react. He wasn't sure, so she sat on his face and pinched his nose <laughs> and his mouth open. <laughs> you have to learn. Yeah. Well, it's a difficult. You know, it was very, very, it's difficult. very difficult. Thing and very difficult, you know. The and I, I wanted I was murderous yeah. at first. Well, you know, you are uh, a father now, and here's the thing that happens when you don't realize this when you're younger, but when you're a, a fucking adult, you have to keep an eye on the kids when they break up because they do crazy Scrap. things, yeah. right? Especially early on, I guess, right? Uh, what do you mean early? Like teen like, years? Yeah, 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 in their first relationship. Yeah, because people will fucking hang themselves in ninth grade because their heart is broken. Right. Or they'll fucking, you know, go crazy. Plus now with social media, they're just looking at their app mentions that say, fuck you, she broke up with you. What do you mean by social media? What is that? Well, it's like this interactive forum. Okay. Yeah. It's fun. On the, on the All internet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I forgot to even mention this. Every night, 8 o'clock, I'm hosting an AOL chat room. I just call it uh, <laughs> Ron's Fun Room. Come on in and cool. just announce your uh, age, sex, location right off the bat. Sure, yeah. I used ASL. to host one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Damn police. Always pretended to be girls. <laughs> but how do you, like, even if you're, even if you're watching a kid, mm -hmm. like, how do you walk them through? You don't. You just keep your eye on them. Yeah, how old your kid, though? Five months, so okay. So you got, anytime, you got he's, another year. He's ready to start dating. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got another year, but yeah, all those things. You know, like uh, kids get really fucked up when, the, and adults do. Have you ever had friends that they get a fucking divorce and they go ape shit? Yeah, for a while. Yeah, and you're just like easy, man. Right, easy. Yeah, Anthony still hasn't recovered from his uh, <laughs> Melinda breakup. <laughs> yeah, he is not. <laughs> yeah, he's going through a wild time right now. Yeah, but I had a friend. Uh, and like I said, we were adults, and like two years later, we'd be at a party. And it's like we're having a great time, huh? We don't have that cunt around here to <laughs> fucking yeah. just keep nagging at us. I'm like, dude, we've all moved on. Right, everything is happening. Yeah. I wonder where the fuck she's not having this much fun. Just come on, man. It's hard when it. you when something happens. You're right. When, yeah. when you start addressing something with the same emotion. You had six months ago about yeah. it, and the person you're talking to is just like, "Oh, sorry, I mentioned it." You're like, "Then it makes yeah. you like, oh God, I should, I'm an asshole." Right, but that happens, and then just you know, slowly you, you kind of get. It. Some people slowly get it. Some people don't. That's right. Yeah. Some people don't at all. They hang on to it, and they hang yeah. angrier.
Yeah, they get fucking crazy about it. And then they start, yeah, everything going wrong. And they blame, well, if this hadn't happened, I'd be in such a better place. This wouldn't be right. happening. And that wouldn't be happening. Some people, you know how you have chemistry. Some people have like a fucking toxic chemistry. And that fucking chaos is all part of it. And maybe that's what was going on with OJ and Nicole. Yeah. You know? and, yeah. I, and part of him might have been turned on when she fucked up. Like, I heard yes. you look at her through the window, all this weird yeah. shit. Like, I heard that too. Like, why didn't he break in then? And, or the, and the, but that she would know. That's what they said on one of the OJ shows. I watched so many of them. But they said that, like, Nicole would leave the, the curtains open on purpose. Because it was, it was just this unspoken game that they played. Like, she would fuck other people. And he would watch her in the bushes. And she would know that he was watching her. But they'd never talk about it. You know what I mean? I wonder if he would jerk off or if he would just get angry. Or both. Just yeah. angrily beating off. This motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. This fucking beauty dick of mine. Imagine that. That's yeah. naked gun era OJ. Imagine yeah. imagine walking down the street and seeing naked gun era OJ angrily beating off in a bush. <laughs> <laughs> like, you talk about your whole world getting turned yeah. upside down. <laughs> He'd be fucking stroking. I just put a little pad and a pen in front of him. <laughs> when you get a chance, I don't want to bother you. Yeah. Normally, I don't do this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try to catch a couple drops of cum on a t-shirt. <laughs> Send it right to eBay. <laughs> Just get it on the number. Get it on the number. <laughs> God, yeah, that is a twisted fucking... Uh, yeah. To not even acknowledge that that's what you're into. Yeah. Right. That's what you're into. It's so crazy. Yeah. yeah. That is... A, that is... It is fucking funny how many times people use an argument or whatever. You know, people talk about fucking makeup sex or break up sex, so they try to get to that point without ever saying that's what they're after. You know what I mean? The makeup like, sex? Yeah, the makeup sex, like they know it's going to be better because they've done it a few times, so they fucking, maybe even subconsciously, go crazy so, till they, so they can get to that point. Yeah. I wonder if she left the curtains over thinking he would never do anything. No, I don't think she ever thought... He was maybe a couple slaps, you know. There was Ron. Was Ron Goldman fucking her too? Like who? Uh, that no one ever knows. Bringing her sunglasses yeah. by, the, or was that just a weird thing? Like they had vibes, right. and maybe she left the sunglasses and called to say, "Can I speak to Ron?" Hey, yeah. I left my sunglasses. Could you bring them over? Yeah. I always have a theory too that he used to put those sunglasses over his heart on and say, "Look who's here to say, <laughs> <laughs> look, it's Jimmy Durante, and he's coming." <laughs> You should, you should have presented that to the police department. I, I called. No one called me back, but I called. I had theories. People. Call the OJ hotline with your boner theories. Yes. Yeah. If you're younger, you don't fucking understand how big this trial was. They don't how, get it. Yeah, how important it was. But I was doing morning radio then, right? And we, the day that the verdict was coming out, we just grabbed the phone and called every continent seven different continents right just randomly we call it like a hotel fucking you know 7-eleven whatever it happened to be everyone who picked up the phone i don't even fuck you sh if it was in china europe everyone had an opinion and gave us that opinion even antarctica we call the scientific fucking place there right? really? yeah that's now, awesome here was the interesting thing about that every White continent thought he was guilty, <laughs> and anyone of color really did not think that he had done it. And we were laughing about it that morning because we thought he was going to be guilty. Sure, of course. You know what I mean? So when that came back immediately, I thought, oh, fuck, I could have put money down on this. The brown people knew. Do you know who yeah. called it right to in New York? Bob Grant. I'll never forget Bob Grant, who was on ABC in the afternoon, yeah. going, they will never convict him. Bob yeah. Grant knew that they would not. Bob Grant was a cynical old radio. He's dead now. Right. For, but uh, Bob Grant, there were some people, I, I thought they would convict him. Yeah, Bob Grant was like the beginning of right-wing radio. Like nobody really was. was doing that, you know, they're out to get us. They're taking away everything that we loved in this. Yeah. Book, you know what I mean? Yeah. And everybody at first was like, what? what are the, it was just like seeing a fucking small wave in the distance. Uh, he was the fucking, he was the little butterfly. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and the Ron Brown thing, he was the yeah. first one to get fired for like really politically incorrect stuff that wasn't, that wasn't FCC violation. Right. Disney fired him for saying like Ron Brown, uh, what do you say? I, I hear he's dead, but then again, I'm an optimist. It was something like that. <laughs> yeah. it, was, yeah. it was a bad thing to say. And Disney, Disney fucking can. And people, I were sick of him, I guess, at that point anyway. I, you know, it, it, it becomes that thing and it, it, it happens now very quickly where, and it's happened in the Fox News, where people go after 
the fucking uh, ads. They go after the you know right, any the advertising, money. but they're not your fans who are going after it. It's not people who. It used to be you've pissed off your listeners, you're fired. But now it's like somebody who's never heard you has managed to call and stop an ad from coming here. So yeah. see you later. And then that becomes that embarrassing thing of like, oh, I thought you liked my show. No, you only like the commercials. That's all you like yeah. about me. Yeah. All those years that you took me out, you never said thanks for the commercials. <laughs> right. We really <laughs> love the commercials. They're like, you're great. You sounded great this you, afternoon. You take it up to the edge and then you just pull it back. <laughs> they always fucking just have this little hack thing. But none of them like you. No. None of them. None of them are fans. None of them listen to you, but the car the advertisers don't care because the advertisers are like, yeah, but they may not be fans of him, but right. they're fans of our fucking toilet paper. Right. They wipe. They yeah. may be liberals, but they wipe their assholes. Like that's how they look at it. Like they're gonna fuck with us. Mel is in the the word from him was he only listened to the other radio stations, never listened to his own station, and he was only listening for the ads. <laughs> and if you heard an ad, and you know, he would just fucking write it down and call up his salespeople. Like, where the fuck are you on this? Just oh, really? How do you not yeah. have this? Wow, really. Yeah. And can you imagine your life, all you're listening to is fucking radio ads? Yeah. You'd be a crazy person. Yeah, but then again, you run Viacom someday. It works. Yeah. Yeah. We almost run. Almost run. You're in you there. Almost yeah. Run Viacom. Him, and, him and Redstone <laughs> together. <laughs> is Redstone out there or no? He's out. Who, Redstone? Yes. I think maybe his, his kids have picked it up. He's involved in all these crazy sexual scandals now. Oh, yeah. Are there more? Yeah. I mean, there was that, there was that one. But, they, he, you know, they're, they're getting, like, he had handed out a lot of cash and stocks to just chicks. Yeah. And his kids are like, <laughs> he didn't know what the fuck he was doing. And, like, the people who were in programming at CBS said, I, I can back that up. This fucker <laughs> had no idea what he was doing. Yeah, he's uh, are they are is Shari Redstone and like that that uh, Philippe uh, Dumont, his name was was that, was that his name? Um, is out. He was like he they gave like a hundred million dollar parachute, and apparently people were not happy with what he did with the company. That Redstone audio of him talking, I love Redstone for being yeah. an old perv. Good for him. Yeah, you're ninety years old. You survived a fire when you were in your fifties. You got all burned up, and now you just want to put your dick in someone. Yeah, he doesn't Knock give yourself a shit, out. Man. Well, it, makes for you, you. it makes you feel like there's something to look forward to in life when you see Fuck these old yes. perverts. Since his 90s, he should be fucking waving his big dumb dick around to everybody. <laughs> Here, eat this. You want a show? <laughs> eat this, stupid. <laughs> eat this, stupid. Could be the name of a new reality show. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not, now I'm fucking starting to think it is a good fucking idea. It's eat, not a bad idea. Eat this, stupid. Eat this, stupid. <laughs> That's a great I mean, summer programming. You're not going to put it on in the winter, but summer programming. Online, right. Yeah, when we're lighter. Right. You know? Just people that are just forced. That might be OJ's new show. It might be his new YouTube that show. That money goes right to the other family immediately. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but you think, it, does, does uh, Fred Goldman have too much pride to take, eat this None. dick no. stupid he, money? he hates him. No. Yeah. He hates him. He's, he, he's got to be so pissed about this whole thing. It's always Fred and the daughter. You never see the wife. Mm -mm. I always wondered about that. Mm-mm. Whether. She probably just wants to be out of it. Yeah, she uh, she on. never wanted to be in it. Yeah. She was moving on that night. Yeah. <laughs> she was the only one who was like, hey, things happen in life. <laughs> we have to accept it. It is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. Fred hasn't let it let it let it rest for a moment. Mm -mm. What did they say about this? But Fred, you got to love Fred Goldman. He first of all looks the same as he did 20 years ago. You know, it is it is odd that uh, I think we talked about this a little bit last week, but it is odd that uh, Jean Benet's Father has not taken up the same uh, with with the same anger that his daughter's dead. Well, there's no murderer, and jo th that man's dead too. This is, is yeah, this Jean Benet's father's dead. Yeah, I think they're both both the they're parents all are dead. dead. Yeah, just the little brothers alive. Yeah, or just the big the, brother. Yeah, just the murderer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the Alleged. brothers. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, he sued CBS for coming to that conclusion. Right. It didn't yeah. look good, though. Well, yeah, they really made it look like, hey, all evidence points to this. They did weird shit on that special. They made a... They, Dad they is wanted... still alive, right? Dad's still alive. Oh, he's still alive. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Did you watch that John Bonet special they did a few months back? No. They did weird, like, they wanted to prove that this eight-year-old or however old the kid was could have done it. So they got, like, a fake human skull, and they had an eight-year-old come in and just hit it with a hammer, some kind of blunt force, mm -hmm. just to prove that yeah. an eight-year-old could have done it, but you're now watching 
a real life eight year old hammer a fake skull. Like, yeah. what are we? They could have just asked me. I have an older brother, and there's no <laughs> fucking doubt that that could happen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know for a fact, ladies and gentlemen, fucking hurts like shit, <laughs> and it isn't just to toughen me up. I know it's supposed to, so I can handle myself on the but streets. That's not what it is. Yeah, no, no, no. never. I no. go. Just let me get beat up out there. Let me take my fucking chances. <laughs> yeah. That was just him enjoying himself. Yeah, why not? We don't have these long, drawn-out, like, uh, <laughs> soap opera trials that are as, as big as they used to be, just because there's so much stuff now. Like, we'd like the Jabonet trial, the OJ trial, like, that's You stuff. just never know what's going to come along. Yeah. Like, that, that wasn't done on purpose. Uh, you just never know. Like, if a Kennedy kills somebody, yeah, we're going to be back into that's the right. trial, you know? What yeah. was it after the OJ? Was there a bigger one after OJ? There had to be something. No, they tried, uh, you know, they tried from time to time to push these things. That's how we got Court TV. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, it's actually how we got TMZ. That's where that guy became famous, the TMZ right, guy. Right, Harvey Levin. Harvey was Levin. Was it Court TV or the People's Court? He was the, uh, he was the analyst for the People's Court. No, he was, yeah, but that, I bet that might even been after the OJ trial. It was, yeah, he it was, was just the guy that you could call from your town, and he would go on and explain, because he was a lawyer and now, then a journalist. Yeah. Can you look at Harvey Levin, uh, People's Court, when did he start? The, I remember him it being an, the legal analyst when I was younger. I could no, be no, 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 no. No, it was the new generation. Doug Llewellyn court. was the face. Right. But yeah. Harvey Levin was the name of it. He wasn't on the original People's Court. Um, I'm gonna disagree, but I may be wrong. Look, you're talking to the People's Court trivia champion. Is that right? That's, I, uh, yeah, I won it on your show, didn't I? He was an attorney. Oh, no, uh, I remember. <laughs> he worked on the People's <laughs> Court yes, after impressing a crew member. Uh, he has worked on the People's Court for 25 years. He deactivated his bar. He created celebrity. It doesn't say what years. years. I had no idea. Yeah, I remember the name uh, Harvey Levin, the legal analyst being Harvey Levin. I just don't know what years he was there. Mm. I, th I think it was before OJ. That's just my memory of it. Now he just like sits there in L.A. talking to a group of people. Hey, do you think he did it? Yeah. So ever, litigants for our next court case. Is he ever going to find a wife, though? That's what I worry about. <laughs> yeah. I just want him to find somebody. Well, he just enjoys being a bachelor, Ron. Mm, okay. Uh... Oh yeah, so the New People's Court said he was he was involved in the prior edition as legal consultant. Hmm. He was a co-host in the field and taking opinions from people at the Manhattan Mall to do the wrap up. Wow. Oh. Yeah, and fill in Doug Llewellyn's position as the court reporter. Poor uh, Jerry Sh Scheindlin. That's Judge Judy's husband, Judge mm -hmm. Jerry. They had, they thought they were gonna like uh, really turn this into something. He did two years and they fired him. Did they fire him? Yeah. What did he do? It just wasn't no. He was no good. He was. Oh, he was wife. a judge. Oh, he, yeah. He was. He was the judge. It was going to be Judge Judy over here, and then Judge Jerry, her husband, was the People's Court guy, and then he only lasted two years. Then Marilyn Millian comes in, and she's been there since two thousand one. Well, he uh, isn't Judy Shannon the highest paid person on television. Yes, yeah, it's some like forty some million dollars a year because it's such a fucking uh, a lucrative show. Yeah. yeah. No, and no advertisers ever going to pull out of it. There's never going to be a problem. Plus syndication <laughs> on syndication. On syndication, she's forty million a year. Yeah, wow. forty million a year. They I'm said judge. That she has an incredible uh, appeal to black people. She that does that show and most daytime sh uh, programming. You have to really appeal to black people. Is it because really? they think mm -hmm. she's fair? I don't know why. They, they never ask. They just say she's tough and fair. Yeah, like a grandmother. Yeah, like black people's grandmothers are like that. <laughs> yes. Very tough. You know what I mean? Well, there would yeah. be no nonsense. No nonsense. Yeah. yeah. But she doesn't seem like she's biased, Judge Judy. She gives shit to anybody, and, and she seems like she doesn't, uh, she, doesn't, she just doesn't seem like she's you know, racially biased. I never understood what don't piss on my leg and tell me it's raining meant. Well, they... It, <laughs> it's pretty obvious. <laughs> well, I mean, I, yeah, I guess, but I don't know. She seemed to fit that into a lot of context. I always say like, don't throw water in my face and charge me for piss. <laughs> 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 you could just say quit lying. Yes, but you want to have that fun thing to say. I, I you guess. know, yeah. she just wants to say piss. Yeah, she's does she say about. that? Yeah, that was the name of her book. Don't pee on my leg and tell me it's raining. Yeah, don't don't bullshit me. Yeah, yeah, that's all that means. But she just wants to talk about pee a little bit. How old is she? She's got to she's be a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> I would love because she's been around a long time, right? Yes, yeah, she has. Long time. Yeah. 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 Judge Judy. She came after Wapner, though. Wapner yeah, was Wapner. definitely after Wapner. Yeah. He was the beginning, but he never enjoyed it. He never enjoyed his money. I may have been he sworn just, to have read your complaint. Yeah, he's just a cranky old fuck. <laughs> yeah, he just died. Yeah. 
1996, she started. Okay, 06. Oh, wow, 21 years. 21 Fuck. years. And how old is uh, how old is uh, old Judge Judy? What is she? Is that out of California? She does that. Yeah, 74. Wow. Let me see what she looks like. She looked old even when she was younger. Yeah, she did. She looks like Nancy Reagan now. Yeah, she does. A lot of women they do Nancy Reagan hair as they get older. Yeah, I guess smart so. look. It's, yeah. a wig. it's a smart look. Is that a wig? Um, I don't think so. Do you or were you is? talking to Sam about his hair? <laughs> <laughs> Just what I chose at the wig store. Yeah. That's a fuck. Does this look okay? Yeah, no, that's a toilet seat cover. <laughs> <laughs> Those old knitted kind. Yeah. Old ladies used to knit. Yeah. This is for the exactly. toilet paper roll. This is fucking doily. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. One of my, I, and this was like pretty early on, was in the 80s with Judge Wapner. Uh, somebody was on his court, he was talking to him, and there was, you know, a money problem. And he says to Wapner, and then he and his wife tried to Jew me down to <laughs> get this thing. <laughs> Wapner was like, what? <laughs> what did you just say in my courtroom? It was one of my best moments of television. I love that too because it's yeah. before DVR. It's yeah. just, you just remember it yeah. always. Look for that Jimmy Day. You're looking at Judge Wapner. But just... did somebody like never like realize like, hey, I, you know, because I remember I used to hear those kind of things when I was younger, and I didn't have any Jewish people in my neighborhood. There was no fucking reasoning for this out of left field prejudice right i love that though that that, that the guy is just so so if there are Look no jewish people down. in your neighborhood yeah you don't, did you think you could say jew me down well we did say it we said quite a few things yeah. there but at the time uh, <laughs> okay <laughs> This All is right. Troy. I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I'm sorry. Look, we were talking about Jimmy, Jimmy Down. Down. Look up. Oh. No, See look. where he played hockey. Jimmy Troy, Down. I, Troy just Googled <laughs> Judge Wapner, and then I said, no, Jimmy Down. I'm trying to interrupt Ronnie and Sam. And then he goes, Jimmy Dowd. No, Judge Wapner, Jimmy Down. This yes. conversation we're having led to Troy uh, Googling Jimmy Dowd. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hockey Troy sometimes, fans. Sir, Troy sometimes listens to a different. He listens to hockey radio uh, <laughs> while the show is on. He's got his headphones plugged into the NHL channel. Yeah, it's not. I mean, maybe that's that line. Didn't yeah, make. I mean, yeah, and it's before everything was uploaded. Yeah, to maybe. YouTube, right? Plus, maybe nobody caught it, and maybe it's just out right. there somewhere in one of the episodes. That's great. But that's that is great. right, uh, Sam. You'll be able to join us, Comedy One on One, just for laughs. Friday, uh, July twenty eighth. Mainline Theater, Jim Norton, Dan Soder, Jimmy Schubert. It's being considered right now the It Show. That's right. Really? Where is it? Yes. Do you know where it is? Uh, Mainline Theater, I don't know. We're, we're picking you up, though. Okay, yeah. I don't know great. where that is. Yeah, they're, they're coming right from my show and going over. That's going to be Don's really gonna fun. Don's going to be waiting for you with a car. <laughs> said. That's delightful. It's cool. That's what you want when you walk off stage. It's going to meet the fans of the girls. Hey, it's buddy. the old Donnie Wick. Yeah, it's great. But it is going to be a fun night. Sam, are you busy that night? Friday? Yeah. No. Could you watch my dog for me? Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm in Montreal, so no, I yeah, can't. Yeah, I'm taking my dog. I, oh, it's a service yeah, just go dog. to the hotel, watch the dog. It's a service <laughs> dog. It's a comfort dog. Yes. Ron's a fearful flyer. Yeah. Yes. I like to have a dog on my lap, and then it, everything feels okay. <laughs> when are you going up? Uh, I think Wednesday. Oh, you're going up when, when, when we're oh, yeah. Okay, great. You'll be up there when we are. Yeah. Okay, good. We'll all be up uh, together. It'll be a lot of fun. Every single comedian... Uh, and America is going to be there together. It's oh, going to be wow. a good time. Some of them are going, like Colin, Sam, uh, Morell, and a few other guys. My uh, Chris Stefano are going to uh, Ireland. They're doing some Irish. Uh, Mark Norman. Yeah, they're doing some weird Irish th thing for the weekend. But there's going to be a lot of great comics. At why the would uh, why would even in Ireland would you set up against? That festival. Cause Cause they, they, I guess there's so many European guys that. Right. Well, you can compete against Montreal now. Years ago, you couldn't because the festival gave away deals. Right. That was the big thing. You went to Montreal, oh, get a deal. That yeah. was the fucking thing, man. You wanted to go up and do new faces. Yeah. And and people were getting like 100,000, 200,000. You remember those days? Yeah. And fucking. And I think Chicken was the last one who I never met. But he was a guy who apparently was very high energy, and the comedians did not love him. Right. And he got some, like, $500,000 deal. It was, it was the biggest deal in Montreal. Again, that was the rumor. And I told you, I asked about him a few years ago in yeah. Atlanta, and they said he committed suicide. Like, I guess nothing took off. Can you look up Chicken the Comedian? I don't I don't think I've ever seen what he looked like. Oh, you just put up Jimmy Dowd again. <laughs> <laughs> enough, enough with the Jimmy Dowd. Yeah, After yeah while, exactly. Oh, it's a prank. <laughs> was his name Michael Roof? Uh... Smallville, Georgia. Yeah, it says he uh, toured chicken, around chicken. Uh, comedy clubs in America with a stage name Chicken, especially popular uh, in college town oh. comedy clubs such as Deja Vu in Columbia, Missouri. 
Wow. He was popular in, in college towns. Let me see what he looked like. I just don't know what his... Michael Roof. Maybe what we could do now is the chicken story, and we can make a you know biopic about Marius on wow. a chicken. That's not him though. That's Jared Christmas. Oh, too yeah. bad. It's, Another guy holding a chicken. Just, you, you're looking you're, Michael yeah. Roof in quotes, and then chicken pictures. The rubber chicken. I wonder why that ever made it as the comedy. What's well, so funny? It is hilarious. Yeah, I can't so think funny. of it without laughing. <laughs> like. <laughs> Who would, who would use rubber but, to make a chicken? Did anyone ever put it in their act? <laughs> the fuck is this chicken doing here? Right. You guys probably thought it's a real chicken. It's mm -hmm. just rubber. Wow. I don't know There's what he did chicken. on stage. Is there video of him on stage? I don't know. He got to go to the the Triple X premiere. He's got to be somebody. Is that where he's from? Well, it's, it's, they said he did some movies, too. It's just Triple X in the background. What the fuck, pizza? I'll tell you this. He had an Air Foot. Uh, he had like an Air Force haircut. Which is one of I think the best looks. It is a good yeah. look. You could have, yeah. You just land it. Oh, that rooftop comedy uses yeah. so many people. I'm drunk. I just uh, always want to. That's eat Eric pizza. Allen. Pizza, it's fantastic. But I don't. Oh, the Acme Comedy Club. My mom's cat. supposed Tommy to be Jagan. one of the best places. Yes. Where is it? Um, that's Side Splitters in Tampa. They, uh, it's, it's in Minneapolis. I've never done it. They had a. War with somebody. There was some comic that would me? fuck. Yeah, that would fuck with them every show. I can't. Oh, Metzger. I think it was Metzger had like a two-year Twitter war with them because he went there, did not have a good experience, and they, you know, I think they said uh, leave halfway through the week. I oh, fired him, and then he fucking stayed pissed. <laughs> for years, what, what, I've never heard of a guy. And again, Louis Lee is the guy I think who owns it or runs yeah. it. And I met him years ago, and, and I've never heard of anyone having a bad experience there. Jeff Metzger, yeah, Metzger. I, 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 I may. I hope I'm remembering the place right. Are you checking it? Yeah, I'm checking it out because I want to do that gig. I'm booking uh, the tour, and I'm, I'm going to. Oh, by the way, before have you thought I forget, of a name for the tour yet? Not yet. I'm still working. I have a couple of ideas. Chip Chipperson's new podcast is up. Uh, I forgot to mention it. Um, Anthony and uh, Lenny Marcus. It's, my, it's Chip's birthday. Oh, the birthday show. The birthday right. show was the, uh, so far, it's been very, very well received. By, by this, I put up last night at 8, by this morning it had 20,000 views on YouTube. Uh, People now, it, Chip has really taken off. Yeah, he is. He's big. I'm supposed to, if he can get in, do a show in Montreal. In Montreal. Yes. Yeah, so, really? Yes. And I talked to Chip and his people. And they have little Canadian flags. Oh, that's cool. That's to right. To prove that, that they're, in, they're in Montreal that's and we're really in Canada. That's cool. true. So that's smart. That's probably one of the reasons why he's doing so good right now. He's thinking a step or two in front of everybody else. Definitely. In marketing, social media. Plus, he's about. I mean, that that that's how people go from being national. Yeah. To international. That's right. All right. It's good. We're also, and I'm talking to some people. They're trying to get. Anthony back in Canada if he can get back into Canada um, well, the, well the economy's in trouble yeah, so they the need economy, him. <laughs> yeah the economy sucks nuts and uh, trying to get him back there well I, I think part of their problem is that their uh, the economy problem is their money looks strange it's weird you can't get around that you don't yeah. take it seriously yeah you can't you don't even want it now, have you guys ever driven in Canada? Have you ever? Yes. And then you're trying to yeah. figure out what miles per hour is versus kilometers. kilometers. You're like, am I going too fast? Yeah. Am I going too slow? Yeah, I just go on feel. Yeah. Like you just kind of you, what everybody else yeah. is doing, flowing yeah. traffic. This, yeah, this just feels try to a get in fast. Let yeah. me uh... try to get in the middle of a pack. Yeah. And off you go. It is very confusing though. Yeah, when it you is. First go up. First time I went to Canada, we got denied entry. I went with Bob Levy. And, I, would um, do, I would do that if I was Canada. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Bobby and uh, me were driving in just to do these like local one-nighters. Right. We had a bunch of different cities. And they stop us at the border. And like, what are you guys going for? We're like, oh, we didn't have working papers. Right. <clears throat> we're just going up to hang out. And like, you're not coming up to work? And we're like, no. And they look up Bob on the computer. Like, have you ever been to Canada? And he's like, no. And, they, and, they, and he goes, well, it says here that you were here performing last year. And Bob Levy goes, oh, yeah, that was Canada. <laughs> I'll never, I'll never forget. <laughs> Worst answer ever. Oh, that, yeah. oh yeah, that was Canada. I'll never forget that answer. I, isn't there like, like of all the times that you can pull over, there's something very weird about the border anyway. Yeah. Where you're just like a little 
You're like, seriously, I'm not doing anything. Yeah. Yeah. You just start to talk faster. But yeah, when you go up there, I always say, I'm here to promote Canada back to America to Montreal. You know what I mean? Like I over Oh sure. You overdo it. Explain like I got fucking Coke in my boot. And that that, and that, that scene in, <laughs> in in I think the movie's traffic where the housekeeper brings the kids to yeah. Mexico and then they're at the border and the brother or something freaks out and then the kids get lost in the desert. Yeah. That always freaks me out. I don't remember no, that. that wasn't traffic. It was the uh, Home Alone. It had a n- <laughs> 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 See, that's why you're doing the big tour. <laughs> By the way, I was wrong about Metzger fighting with them. Metzger was fighting with the um, comedy on state in Wisconsin. Okay. Another, oh, okay. another club everybody likes and gets along with each other. I've never heard of that one. And they're they're near each other. Um, which is why it was an honest mistake on my part. But I think Metzger eventually got around to making up. But it was one of those things where everybody that went there said, oh, this is a great club. Yeah. You're going to love it. They fucking take you golfing, and they take you... And then Metzger had a terrible fucking time and wouldn't drop it. Yeah. Had a fucking radio war against them. It's funny. Kurt yeah. doesn't let things go easily. No, 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 no. <laughs> Thin-skinned comedian. A lot of comedians... They get their feelings hurt very easily. Yeah, yeah, and then you go after people. Sure. Yeah, and then they stay angry. They're For like a an long ex. time. They're like an OJ. Yeah. They're like a fucking barefoot OJ where they can't drop it. Kurt was actually just watching other comedians on stage jerking off in the bushes <laughs> outside the fucking club. <laughs> <laughs> Angrily. Yes. yes. Angrily. So you know how? Oh, by the way, you know how we finally got into Canada was Bob Levy's wife at the time, Lori. They thought we were going to emigrate to Canada, and I, oh, and they asked me. They said, "How much?" They said, "How much money do you have?" I said, "Nothing. I had no money. I had to create a cre- credit card. Yeah. We were going up broke." They're like, "You guys are vacationing with no money." So my my family and then Lori Lee had to fa- f- uh, fax the birth certificates up to prove that we weren't going to emigrate, and we had to leave like a two thousand dollar deposit at the wow. at the thing, and then get. But they did eventually let us go through. Did they give you your <clears> money back? Yeah, when we went back. Uh, but I still get questioned about that once in a while. That's nineteen ninety two. Maybe 93. And I still get questions about that when I go to Canada. Once in a while, somebody will go, you were, com- what happened? And I explain, and they, they, they never yeah. care. You should try to explain Levy to him. Yeah. You, your phone, <laughs> like my you fr- can see he doesn't give a shit. I'm like, yeah, we did Woodstock 94 together. He was doing coke off his license at 3 o'clock in the morning in a tent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was funny. But we did actually get in and have great... Uh, Great shows. That was the thing to do when you were back then. In the early 90s, man, because Florentine and Levy would go up there and fuck girls together. I'm like, I wanted to do that so bad, but then I went up and I didn't. You didn't fuck anybody. No, I don't believe I did. You yeah. didn't get lucky? No, I believe Bob did, though. Yeah? Yeah, but I don't believe I did. Uh, why not? I, I just don't think I had the game back then. And Florentine got laid everywhere. Everywhere that fucking yeah. idiot went, he got laid. Jim was a ma- People don't understand, Jim is really, you underestimate Florentine. If you look at him now and think, oh, he's just dating one or two people at a time, uh-huh. he was a fucking animal. Yeah. Really was. Well, he had the perfect kind of fucking hair. That, That's right, that, that rock and roll hair. Yeah, he had rock and roll hair. But, by the way, he's got a special coming out this year about his divorce. Yes. And it's almost OJ crazy. I watched really? him do it a couple of times. Oh, you've seen it? No, I watched him in the clubs when he was working it out. Oh. Uh, he was doing it a lot at the stand. And, I mean, there is shit that he was doing that was literally insane. Really? Literally insane. Jim was. Yeah. Yes. I've never, you know, it's funny. It. In all the years I've known Jim, and he's again, he had me, I first paid gig in comedy. I know Jim since 1990. I've never seen him freak out over a woman. Never. Well, he had a kid now. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, know, but, so that was a big, that's a big part sure. of it. Like, you're like, okay, this is the thing. I had my time. Now I'm going to be a father and this is going to be a family and blah, blah, blah. Oh, great. She's got a gym membership. She's going to fucking, you know, take care of her. And then she meets a younger Florentine. She met some guy that kind of looked like him when he was younger. Wow. That happened to Hulk Hogan, too. You're a fucking hero. That's it right. Did. Yeah, and he went nuts. Of course he did. I yeah. mean, can you imagine? It's amazing. I, it's funny. You just, I've just never seen that. Like, and again, but the kid's a big thing. But after Jade died, Jim got a... He kept the dog. Like, when I saw him with a dog, I'm like, wow. It's weird just to see people right. evolve well, as people, yeah. yeah. Well, you, I mean, Florentine would come in when he was married and be, like, happy about being married and be like, that he part of my life is over. Him. Right. Dude, I remember being in the car on 6th Avenue with him. I remember asking him... How do you just fuck the same person? Are you? Because I I know him so well, and you know he would have told me if he was cheating. I knew yeah. he would have yes. told me because he knew me well enough. He would never. And he's he like, never. He always says the truth, no matter what. Anyway, he just says things. He's just a brutally honest kind of Asperger yeah. honest dude. Like, and he would just fucking say to me like, 
I don't know, just fuck the same person. Are you? Because I, I know him so well, and you know he would have told me if he was cheating. I knew yeah. he would yes. have told me because he knew me well enough. He would never. And he's he like, never. He always says the truth, no matter what. Anyway, he just says things. He's just a brutally honest kind of Asperger, yeah. honest dude. Like, and he would just fucking say to me like. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm out, it's out of my system. I'm fine. Like, I'm, I'm not even missing it. Like, it was really weird to hear him like that. But he's also like one of those dads that's like super buddies with his kids. He is, yeah. You know, so they go to fucking concerts yeah. together. I saw him at yeah. Sabbath together. He took yeah. him to see Black he Sabbath. I mean, like, the kid knows fucking hard rock and metal like he was Eddie Trunk's kid. Uh, but, and then when that thing breaks up, but he goes through... Like, you can see, like, he's still kind of pissed about sure. it, but some of the shit that he had done. I would say what it was, but yeah, I don't want to give it away. Don't, because I don't even know. Yeah. It's fucking hilarious, but it's so nuts. This is like a, in my opinion, like, going to one of those next level fucking specials where it's so brutally honest. Oh, that's great. That couples are going to watch it and just start to fucking look at each other, you know? <laughs> I really want to see it. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait to see it. Because I didn't watch him work out the material. When yeah. is it? Do you know when it's coming out? Um, When's it going to go up for sale? No, yeah. I mean, he's he's he he recorded it a while ago, but he's holding it because he had something before anyway. So maybe it'll come out this uh, this autumn. I don't know. I know that he was just holding it because he didn't want to get it too close to something to else. Something yeah, he's else smart. He had done. Good for Jim. Yeah. So you're doing stand up again? I'm just fucking hanging out at the stand. Yeah. It's fun uh, to see you there, man. I, yeah. there. I can't believe I'm so happy to see you when I go. Yeah. I mean, it's, the, you know, it's the easiest thing to do if you've done radio. You just walk up, you say the same thing on the radio, people laugh and start clapping. Radio is harder because no one claps. That's right. No one laughs. Like some of the guys that you're looking with just look over you like, <laughs> what are you fucking talking about yeah. right now? <laughs> yeah, or your guys that have been with you forever just like staring at you like. Yeah, like, oh, God. Looking at the, all right, two and a half more hours. Yeah. Okay. I'm not, first of all, I'm not someone to laugh to you. I will if a guest comes in. <laughs> For us, they clap at 11 a.m. <laughs> yeah. When it's done. What, so, got you, what got you back into yeah. it? Like hanging out in the scene and everything. Well, uh, Jay and Christine were asking me to do some, so I did some different things, and we were fucking, you know, doing more live shows. So I'm just like, and then the the folks at the at the stand just said, "Come in, host a little bit." You know, what are you gonna do on the weekend? I can't be like you. I'm not living up in Connecticut where I'm just staring out the window waiting for Monday. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what? It's start. It's hard to fucking spend your time. You know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. What like, do you do? Yeah, yeah. What are you going to supposed to do with your time? Right. I don't watch wrestling. I'm going to be honest. I, I was in. I was in. I was in your neck of the woods yesterday. I was in Philadelphia. Is that right? And not Connecticut. What was it all? You're doing an ECW documentary. <laughs> <laughs> I wish <laughs> this is where it I all would started. watch the ECW <laughs> documentaries all day. Yeah. No, it was a WWE thing. WWE was in town. Mm. Who was the main wrestler? What type of a question is that? Who was the main wrestler on the main is wrestling show? Is it still show? Larry Zabisco? Is he still <laughs> no. at the top of the fucking Oh, my charts? God. <laughs> fucking, wasn't he the Intercontinental Champion? <laughs> yes. Larry Zabisco. Yeah. What a showbiz name. When, when, <laughs> I forgot about Larry Zabisco. Who needs his stage name when your oh name is Larry Zabisco? Oh, my God. Was that before or after Don the Magnificent One Morocco? <laughs> <laughs> it was right around the same time. They were both wrestling at the same time. Larry Zabisco. And was Pedro Morales there at the same time? God or was damn that, it. I forgot uh, him, too. <laughs> uh, Vince always used to to say Pedro if you'd like to say something to our Spanish fans out there now <laughs> <laughs> Pedro would take a second just to fucking get the Spanish people fired up yeah it would work though yeah do you think Larry Zabisco has the look of today's wrestler <laughs> yes he does <laughs> It's that old uh, Pittsburgh look yeah. that people love so much I don't know if they love it so much <laughs> Yeah, he doesn't... Uh... He, he was in one of the biggest matches of all time, though, when he fucking turned. And I think... I, 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 don't, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure it was in a stadium. Not even in a... Oh, a yeah, league. yeah, yeah. Who, who was it against? Who was the big guy? Um, Bruno? Bruno San Martino. Yeah. Who had, he had taken Larry under his wing, and then uh, towards the end, Larry... Uh, turned on him. What turned Larry Zabisco? Can we look up what turned Larry you Zabisco? You want to know what, yeah. what made Larry yeah. Zabisco I think turn a, his back on I, Bruno I, San Martino? I think a memo from Vince. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, and Jim, to answer your question, that, that hairy barrel chested look is not quite the, Too bad. the look of today. Too bad. <laughs> yeah, no, we weren't, uh, we weren't covering a lot of this last oh, night. Oh, you didn't talk about Larry Zabisco? No, we didn't end up getting into. Larry Zabisco and what made him turn on Bruno San Martino last night. How'd you get back and forth? 
uh, in a car in an automobile. Wow, so you, yeah. you're tired today. Well, I'm all right. What time yeah. do you home? Uh, like one. Why did you drive all the way up to Westchester, all the way back here? Why don't you just get like a uh, stay here in the city? Or get a Marriott or something. Would have saved you. Because he'd be like the movie Big, where the fucking guy's just in his room crying, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like in Oreos. <laughs> Here's a shot in the distance. It's one of my favorite scenes in any fucking movie. What? Yeah, yeah, where he's, he shuts the window and yeah, then he's he just standing the there, yeah, he's crying. He really looks like a terrified little kid. It's really well done. Uh, it's only a, I mean, it's a half hour distance, like I, each I, way. So yeah, it's an extra hour. I get to the city though, and it's like I could drive another half hour. I can sleep in my own bed. That's what I wanted to do. You save the money. Sleep in your bed, like right? He wants to bed. save the money. Yeah. yeah. The hotel money. Well, yeah, I mean, come on. What am I not going to get? Stay I, at the Hamptons where you get lumpy soap. You know what I mean? You get that, <laughs> yeah. It feels like you put getting oh, soap, but also like a little back rub. Yeah, the massage soap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that. The word you're looking for is exfoliation. Oh. And, uh, I do enjoy that. Oh. Yeah. I use a good exfoliant on my I face. I got to tell you, when I see that, that lumpy soap, I still end up just rubbing it on my hands and using my hands. I don't use the, I don't use the massage. You know? That's odd. I mean, yeah, it's a weird yeah. thing, isn't it? I, I love know. I love a good... a good, uh, a good ex I like to this, buy the natural soaps with little pieces of things in them. Oatmeal. Yeah, pieces, little pieces of glass. It just feels so good against your skin. <laughs> oh, man. Nice lava soap feel. Yeah. You like feel that? Feel cleaner. Yeah. Feel, well, my, feel my skin. I don't need to. You want to? No. You can. We should We should take a break. Uh, yeah. Hopefully food will come soon. Yeah, where's that food at? It's... We're on it. Hey, Ron, you remember what? that guy? Do I remember him? This was <laughs> oh, my, boy. This was seriously my star intern. Was Anthony, he? Anthony, yeah. Well, if you notice, and I think Anthony backed me up on this, my interns go on to work here all the time. I got 62 former interns who now work in this. 62? Cell. Yeah, 62. Person in second place with that has three. Wow. <laughs> yeah, three. It's a hell of a lead. Yeah. God damn. I like to call myself the Joe DiMaggio of bringing people into the business. <laughs> and I'm on the uh, bet this great employee. My he's right great. He yeah. is great. Yes, he's very really he's great. Good. Well, when I came here, it was chewing gum and smoking and cursing, and we just broke him down at Boys Town and came in a boy, he went out a man. Yeah, That's right, a happy That's man. Right. That's yeah. right. He's always, smiling man. He's always got a smile on his face. He's always trying to. Yeah. He's always trying. He's always. I, I find he's always trying to move things forward, even if he's not quite sure of the direction. Right. Things should be moving in. Yeah. It's Smart. Just, just pushing it in this direction. I don't know if this is where we're going, but I'm pushing. I always like to say he had the personality of an Italian grandmother. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, he does. And, did you ever bring any of your mom's food in for them? <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, no. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Took a beating. It's not good. It's to be awful. fair, have you ever heard? Have you've had my mom's pound cake, right? Oh, you know what? I'm not. I can't. I can't be along with this now. You fucking dropped the ball on that. I didn't drop any ball. Actually, I guess I no, did. No, drop, drop the, the brick. Ball. Yeah, yeah. I dropped the pound. I mean, did you eat any of that pound cake? Yeah. Shit. <laughs> well, first <laughs> of all, shit. Terrible. You know, my producers attack everything pretty hard. I mean, a couple big guys. Matter of fact, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> a matter of fact, as you know, I've had some uh, management background in wrestling. Yes, you have. Uh, and, uh, Did you? Yeah. I used to manage the Florida State champion women. Um, <laughs> if you look real closely, you can find it on the WWE Network. Is that right? Yeah, because that pay-per-view that, that you did, yeah. Dark Match 4, they aired a clip of it, and that pay-per-view is on the network. Is that the one where I was swinging a cane? That's or? right. Yeah. I yeah. swung a cane quite a bit. But I got two big guys, two big producers right now, brothers, mm -hmm. uh, Chris and Vito. Uh, twin brothers. They're twins. Yeah. Wow. I And they also wear old time like <laughs> under their shirts. <laughs> yeah. I'm not making this up. It looks like Gorilla Monsoon's old fucking wrestling gear. <laughs> the, the, the low cut white beater with <laughs> yeah. all the chest hair coming out. But it's also dark. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're wearing a yeah. black fucking leotard as a man. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very proud of them. Yeah. So that's your, that's your tag team of the future. Yeah. Yeah. What is it about, about you that conditions these kids to become legitimate. They're scared of you. Well, no, but also here's the thing too. People don't realize this because they're always trying to build up their, it all takes place in the mind, yeah. okay? The way you, team acts, the way you're in and out of the fucking ring, uh, the way you get them against the, and hit them in the back with a cane. Yeah. And then for some reason at that point they pass out completely for a, you know, they've, they've they pass out for four seconds, right? Which gives you that three seconds that you need, and that's all you need. <laughs> yeah, that's all you need. And your guys have to wrestle women most of the time. That's better. Yeah. Huh. All right, Anthony, we're gonna have you wrestle some women. 
like Andy Kaufman. That's right. Yeah, yeah. but but she, that we were talking. Yes, and hopefully things will wind up for you the same way. <laughs> <laughs> His mom, uh, he, cancer. Yep. Yep. He, <laughs> twice in a row, he brought it, brought in pound cake that was burnt to smithereens. It's terrible, dude. Why didn't you try the uh, what's the Italian thing she's known for? She this? does the uh, sausage and pep uh, the bread. That Ron loves. Sausage Ron and pepper, loves pepper bread, pepper yeah. Bread. You guys don't... That's kind of heavy for you in the morning, though, right? It is, yeah. A little bit. I'm not having yeah. sausage and pepper. I wouldn't trust his mother to make it anyway. Mm. You're that bad. Yeah, she's, she's an abomination yeah, I mean, kitchen. you talk about strikeouts. An abomination. Anthony, did she know that it failed so poorly? We oh, told her. Oh, yeah. We told her. How'd she take it? Not as well as you would think. Mm. <laughs> right. I, I didn't think well at all. Yeah, she was embarrassed. I mean, I have to... I'm, I, I, I believe... Look at this. Show him the picture. Tell me... This is a pound cake. Oh my God! Jesus Christ! Looks like the fucking looks like the fucking the back of a truck in a but, Walmart. But see, <laughs> here's the thing: if somebody's mother made that, I'd act like I liked it. I'd be like, "Oh, this is good, Mrs. Anthony." Well, you Thank know, you. our school of radio is just like we just call it like it is. Fucking shock jocks. Pull no punches and just we say the things that people just think. You know. But, but is that why you lost so many listeners that you're bleeding? Well, what is that? What they told you? Mm-hmm. Suck dicks? Yes. <laughs> that sucks, man. It was nuts, actually, but suck okay. Suck nuts? Yeah. Oh, man. I... They, call you, they were actually calling you Jimmy and Suck Nuts. They think it's on me? It's mm. a great name. Uh, yeah. Dude, you ought to do that. Catchy. Your, suck Nuts is your Dude. fucking radio name. Yeah, but you spell it S-U-K-K-N-U-T-Z. <laughs> suck Nuts in the house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I could be Suck Nuts. But I'd have to get, like... Uh, Everybody, everywhere else, I go. For instance, today at 5 p.m., I'll be on Fox News Radio on Tom Shalou's show. Oh, I still haven't done that. I want to do a show. I'll tell him. I'll tell him. Yeah, they do. asked me one day, but I was uh, away. What, that, now, is it political, or you just do regular radio? It's uh, it's just regular. Where I mean, do they it, tape it's, it? Uh, right in the Fox News. Oh, building. they do that. Okay. It's like you know, I mean, there's a political slant to it, but it's it's like he what he did on Red Eye. You know, what channel is it on? Fox News Radio. I don't know. It's syndicated throughout the country. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah, AMs, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's not serious, but it's like channel 400 or something, if you have one of those internet deals. At AM is big now. People are really flocking to it. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> AM radio. <laughs> AM radio. <laughs> Nothing quite yeah. like it. Yeah. Well, I guess because they do the weather on the ones, who the fuck, you know, every time a one comes up, you get to find out whether or not it's raining. Sure, it's important. <laughs> right, right. Just sitting there for 10 minutes yeah. trying to figure out, what, is it raining or what? <laughs> You imagine like you're fucking you you're having a conversation and your producer's going fucking crazy because it's the one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it's 67 degrees, partly cloudy. <laughs> I'm miserable. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. Uh, I bet you Fox News. I bet you Fox Radio does well though. Yeah. Fox Radio. The name, yeah. yeah. I bet it does okay. By the way, what happened to fucking stupid O'Reilly's blog or whatever he was going to do podcast? It's a pay podcast. Oh. You want to get the Factor podcast? You Is he doing pay. it? Yeah, I think so. No one talks about it. How about no. you don't do a fucking factor f podcast that people pay for, you idiot? What a dumb <laughs> old the, man. Uh... <laughs> what a dumb old man trying to capitalize like it's 1995. On, you don't, it doesn't work that way. Got a yeah. lot of loofahs Just to open buy. it up. Open it up. Well, there is, uh, was a news report now that he is talking with Hannity and wants he and Hannity to go and start a new TV network. But apparently those guys weren't the best buddies when they work together, but you know, yeah, you don't need to be. Yeah, well, O'Reilly's figured out a way to. Uh, who one of the one of the I think even old radio companies was going to put up money for this to try. It, it is a smart move. Yeah, I, I thought for years, why doesn't somebody attack Fox News from further right? I mean, that's what you do in radio. Mm -hmm. If you go into a town and the top 40 station has a fucking 10 share, and the and the, and the the rock stations have fucking threes. You don't make another rock station. That was probably uh, right. Glenn Beck's vision, right? I don't know, because he's a different kind of right-wing guy. I mean, he is like Mormon. Right. You know, right-wing. Where you, I thought, if you would go after, like, an Anthony Cumia, somebody that would be political, but also... You know, crazy and funny and shit. Yeah. I always thought that there was money in that. Yeah. And yeah. who's the other guy that uh, Anthony has on his... Uh, Gavin McGinnis? Yeah. He's yeah. funny. He's funny. Uh, and way right wing. Because yeah. they never had funny guys. They never no. had anybody who was funny. Gutfeld was funny. Greg Gutfeld's a funny dude. Did he do, I, did he, he do radio? Uh, oh, radio. I'm sorry. Yeah. He went on Fox. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he ever did radio. 
I know. I think I he could. See, I see Gutfeld on the five. I can't make it through the five. I, I've never watched it, but he yeah. had his own show. He's a very funny. He's a funny writer too. How come he can't make it through the five? It's just a tough watch for me. Yeah, you know, it's like it's almost like the View or something. I just can't. I can't do it. Yeah, I can't watch most panel discussion things. Yeah, like most groupings of people. I'm not interested in. Dude, if you watch. CNN now, they'll put on like 19 people. There'll be like little oh, I know. It looks like the fucking Hollywood squares. Everyone's just sitting yeah. around and in a little box. Don Lemon is just going, guys, guys, right. guys, Calm guys. Down. Yeah. We're talking over each other. You, If I'm talking, you have to stop. Like, right. Don't put eight of them on at the same time. Yes, it's insane. Third grade. Greg yeah, but, is like the lead face in the five. That, I mean, he yeah. is the lead on the five. That's great. But like you, yeah, I guess they just don't have those aside from like Tucker Carlson. They don't have. They haven't been building individual personalities enough that they trust somebody to just take a show like that. Because that's. I think that's where it's most successful is when you find an O'Reilly, a Hannity. A, here's the guy. Yeah, here's the guy. Well, the five used to be on at five, so the fucking made a little bit of sense. Right now, the five is on like at nine, but at five o'clock they have just something really crazy. It's like, like letting people host for a week or something. I can't even fucking figure it really? out. Yeah. I should add four more people to the panel and just call it the nine. Yeah. Just have nine people trying to, <laughs> trying to get their shit in, you know? Yeah. The five at nine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough, what they're doing is very tough. Getting rid of Me Megan Kelly. Megan Kelly made a mistake leaving. No one gives a shit about her in daytime TV. She was interesting at Fox because well, she was tough. Prime time, Sundays. But she's, you know, she's, yeah, but she's going day, I'm saying she's going yeah. daytime TV. Right. No one cares about her there. I think that's right. Dude, she was very, very good at what she did. Last night I was watching her, and they were trying to soften her look. So her hair has gotten really longer. Uh, and they just, they're like, we don't know how to make you appeal to people where you're not doing like an angry fucking Fox show. But that's what she was supposed to be doing. That's she what was she tough, was doing. Yeah. And she was great at it. And you felt like she had integrity when she questioned people on Fox. Even if she was wrong, you felt like at least she was going to ask questions. She was very good. And with O'Reilly going, she would have been number one over there. Absolutely. She would have been top of the world. It's like nobody nobody paid attention to Katie Couric or Bryant Gumbel. Both Terrible of them moves. were like you the biggest stars your, ever. You find out that so much of that is just their address at the time. That if you host the Today Show, if you get the Tonight Show, you're going to get something right. big there. You know? so Matt Lauer is like the smartest dude in show business. He just stuck to it. They cannot and now he's replace making a him. ton of money. They exactly. don't even like him. They haven't liked him for tw ten years, mm -hmm. and they don't know who else to put there. Yeah, yeah. there's something about it when when, yeah. you, when you have the place that works. She has Gervais on her next one, which will probably be at least uh, decent because he's a funny interview. But um, no one wants to see her doing this. People liked when she was kind of going after Trump or when she was going after yeah. liberals or D.L. Hughley. Yeah. That's where they like her. And now that she's the same person in a place they don't like her. It doesn't make sense. It's so stupid. She, she can't have an opinion on network, right? Like, you're not really supposed to be that... that you're supposed to be a journalist. Yeah. 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 Well, this show, till like last night, somebody had brain cancer and all that. Like, it's shit that you really don't even want to talk about, mm -hmm. you know? Like, if even if my friend had brain cancer, I wouldn't bring it up to him. I just would be like, hey, dude, how's everything? His fucking head would be shaved and right. shit. I wouldn't even say exactly. how do, you feel. Did you just, get that hat I sent you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just drop it. But she I, she did, like two weeks ago, she had this little girl on from some fucking worn torn thing that grew up to be a ballerina, like a little girl from Africa. And everyone loved the story so much, she just threw in another fucking segment the following week. That's how uh, desperate they are. No. They're just like, uh, With the same girl? Yeah. yeah. You Everybody remember from last week. <laughs> I'd never seen that before. That'd be like if we came on this morning and we were like, Our sh <laughs> here's Anthony Cumia back again. <sighs> well, they would enjoy that. That, would, that wouldn't hurt. So, will, <laughs> will you guys be able to get him back again? Yeah. Sure. I remember when as you... Long as, as long as we keep sucking nuts. Yeah. That's right. When when you told me a while ago that you wanted to get Anthony in, I was like, that seems like a long shot. I don't think... I didn't see it happening. Mm -hmm. And you guys fucking pulled it out of nowhere. Well, we were the we had him on... The, you know, we, again, fought very hard to even get him on the phone. And then after we had him on the phone the same day, he called into the afternoon show and miraculously right. was let through when the first time he had called into the afternoon show, he was put on hold for 20 minutes <laughs> and never was put on the air. Um, so that's the sincerity of other people fighting for him. I never, uh, I was not there that day or I would have had a meltdown on the air. I was getting calls from Keith the cop. Why the fuck is he putting him on hold? I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about.
But Anthony did call into the radio show in the afternoon and was left on hold and never mm. put through. So uh, I was, I'm just, it's not a competition. Like I'm just, I don't question my motives about why I have Anthony on and the company. We, we fucking went after them. We didn't pretend to go, to go ask the company to put him on. We sincerely asked the company to put him on and we have been peppering them for fucking the, the almost year that we've been on together. And for me for two years before that. So, you know, why they finally let him, I don't know or care. I don't right, care. Just the yes. Yeah. Just looking for the yes. Yeah. Maybe it was a fuck you to other people. Good. I don't know or care. That's right. I love it. But, um, you know, check for more updates about how bad our show is. Fucking yeah. in front of nine people in front of a fucking hot dog truck. <laughs> right. One quick question, and then I'll plug my gig. Um, Sam, why did you get Voss and Bonnie fired? <laughs> 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 All right. Um, Tim, you want to plug this? You want me to? Comedy 101, just for laughs. Right. Friday, July 28th, Mainline Theater, Jim Norton, Dan Soder, Jimmy Schubert. Uh, and it's just those guys hammering local Montreal openers. Uh, and you said you are available that night. Well, I, didn't, I said I didn't have You plans. did say you'd be happy to watch Ron's yeah. dog. I don't are you not afraid? Ron's doing us a favor by coming in. He doesn't bite, does Do he? Do me a favor. <laughs> yeah, all dogs bite. I mean, uh -huh. that's, that's in their nature. This is right. not my dog. You don't have an animal for your kid yet? We have a dog. Yeah. What kind? A labradoodle. Oh, it's a very cute a, dog. It's a man's Loves dog. Me. Yeah. It's a man's dog. <laughs> <laughs> right, there's, wait, there's the picture of my wrestling team. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow! <laughs> oh, that's great. No, by the way, that. That, by the way, that isn't a it's like. Brony Brothers. Hey, dr fucking, you know, dress up tomorrow. That was just me having them take their shirts <laughs> off in the show. Here's the other thing I like about Vito. The fucking shoulder hair, not just back the best. hair. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a great wrestling look. Now, I suggest that we bring them in as heels. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and then, you know, under some circumstances, when the heat's really big, we turn them face. Yeah, I mean... And yeah. the one guy probably just waxes his uh, shoulder. Believe me, he has it, too. He's, I mean, he manscapes his fucking... <laughs> yeah, uh, of course but, he by does. By the way, this is the thing about Chris Stanley. He has worked with Jimmy now for 10 years. And Jimmy just uh. referred to him as that guy. People, <laughs> don't, people don't remember him. I, no. I remember Chris, yeah. but I thought they were brothers. No, they are. They're I didn't even brothers. recognize him. Yeah. Chris keeps to himself. Yeah. Well, he's never met a management. Right. Once in all these years. Ten years, he's never met management. It's not the greatest strategy for yeah. growth. And uh, <laughs> he, he's been booking for my show, never will return an email. He's, <laughs> a, he's shy. He's shy on email. Right. By the way, Labradoodle is, is a big dog. It is I, a big I, dog. No, I, I don't know the 60 pound dog. Is that right? Oh, yeah. You have a picture of your dog? Can I get a look at it? You want to see? Or do you try to keep your dog out of the. Yeah. You know, I try to keep <laughs> He's my trying to sell alive. it to us weekly. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's waiting. We should. Oh. Now that they that's, that's adorable. They, well, that's a puppy. That's adorable. But they look fake, right? When they're yeah. walking around, yes. I see them in the city, and I'm like, that looks like a Muppet. You know what I mean? When they're walking, it looks like a fake Muppet walk. Hypoallergenic, though. I, yeah. I want to get a little dog that's hypoallergenic and just pet it. You think my dog's too big? Look at here. Yeah, go it's right, very yeah. cute, your dog. Look at that dog's dick. It looks like it has a face on it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah it, does. it looks like a little dog almost in front of it. <laughs> so See, adorable. That's the dog and the baby. Now, which is which? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm struggling with this. Which one has the bone in its mouth? <laughs> that's nice. You like being a dad? I do. You're yes. stay-at-home dad. <laughs> yeah. no, I work yeah. <laughs> Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah. For what? Three hours a day? You have 21 hours home. Wow. Yeah, but I got other... I got a job. Did you, your wife quit her job? Not yet. She might. But well, who's watching the fucking baby? Fucking strangers? Well, she works. My wife works from home part of the week. And then a couple of days my parents take the baby. A couple of days we have a, a woman in the building that helps us out. Right, in other words, you weren't ready to have this kid. No, it yeah. wasn't. It wasn't a commitment that you had to a family. What are you talking about? You get you get help with childcare. That's a thing. Yeah, help that with childcare, you're fucking taking that kid around in a bucket. <laughs> Somewhere <laughs> along the line, you got to be. Did you have a stay at home mom? That raised you? I, well, I you did. Were I did. No, Me I too. had a stay-at-home mom. It was Me a different too. time, though, for, for, for us. I had a stay-at-home mother. Yeah. Different time. 
Different time it's One time I came from home from school, my mom wasn't there. I threw up on the fucking floor. <laughs> <laughs> she's, not, <laughs> she's not dead. Just panicking. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> she was at Ooh. the market. <laughs> we get a break yeah. anyway, so now we've been it's nine forty. Single yeah. income households are, are, are much more difficult these days. Yes, they are. Oh, I thought you were doing a live read. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got quiet. Yeah. I was Zip recruiter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Ronnie is hanging out with us. Ronnie yeah. uh, gig uh, is going to be this Friday night in Montreal. I'm there. Dan Soder's there. Jimmy Schubert's going to be there. And you can catch me at the Jisoo Theater Wednesday, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, they, they added the Thursday show, so I'm guessing tickets are selling well. And the new Chippa podcast is up on iTunes and Riotcast and also on YouTube. Um, it's a it's a really funny one. Anything else to plug? Oh, uh, uh, August fifth, the Borgata Casino. And check out our uh, our podcast. Uh, if you search Jim and Sam Show on SoundCloud or iTunes, you'll find it. You go to youtube.com slash Jim and Sam Show. You'll see all the videos. And I'll be on uh, Tom Shalou's show on Fox News Radio at 5 p.m. Eastern today. And the Anthony video is on our YouTube yes. page. So go check that out. All right, be right back. Even show you how much money you could save if you can't afford to pay off all your debt. 1 800 900 8407. That's 1 800 900 8407. 1 800 900 8407. Today, how to incorporate your business in just 10 minutes so you won't lose everything if you get sued. Step one stop putting it off. If you're not incorporated and someone sues your business tomorrow, it's not just your business at risk. You can lose everything, your home, your car, even your life savings. Step two, call the following number for a free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. 1-800-700-4214. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating quick and easy. So you can incorporate or form an LLC in just 10 minutes. That number again is 1-800-700-4214. Step three, congratulate yourself. By taking just 10 minutes to incorporate your business or form an LLC, you protected your home, your car, and your life savings. And that is how you incorporate your business in just 10 minutes. But hurry while they're still giving away these 10-minute incorporation guides for free. Call 1-800-700-4214. That's 1-800-700-4214. Hey, truck drivers, have you heard? 